Oh, he's gonna do bishop c5. If he sees this coming. Which he doesn't. Jack. Meaning, I have to fight out this difficult endgame. Check. 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 Alright, so my stream hasn't dropped in the last five minutes. Or in the last two. Okay, so my opponent wants to go into this particular yeah. endgame. Check. Don't ask why. I'm not going to epaulette mate my own king. Because I know what an epaulette mate is. Check. 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 Oh, I had king f8. Check. 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 Victory. Well, that guy would not give up that endgame. People just love getting bad endgames and then not giving them up.
Ready. Going berserk. Check. F6 is such a good square for the knight in this opening. Um, that's why I'm going through contortions to get it there. Check. Ready. Going berserk. Check. So my strategy is just to try to wear down my opponent as quickly as possible. And what better way than to psychologically stab at them right in the opening. That and this just happens to win a pawn, but um, some, I know like it's tempting to just play moves without looking at what's going to happen. In particular, when you berserk and you don't have much time to think. But I think it's important in every position to find the most powerful move. Check. Uh, so queen g4 might happen if I don't plug this up. Check. Oh, also, I'm threatening to take F8. So, yeah, free piece. That's not bad. Queen G4 looks scary because I have targets, but uh, my opponent's king might also become a target. So, there's a lot to consider here. Actually, queen g4 is pretty reasonable. I was thinking that I'd have queen e8 check or some kind of attack against it, but I really don't. I guess queen e6 would have been a good reply. Still have it. Yeah, let's exchange queens and get out of here. Check.
check. I'm not going to get mated on the king's side. I'm not that dumb. Or at least it's going to take something more clever than that to defeat me. That being rook h6 and rook h2 mate. Yeah, I actually know that pattern. Sure, let's exchange knights. Alright, so I got a passed pawn, it's going to promote, and I'm up on time. Yeah, he D2. really should have waited, because there's a good chance I might have blundered with bishop d2. Arguably, maybe I could trap his knight after blundering, but that's just speculation on my part. Okay, I again have no idea how to play any of this. I'm going to play the move that gets me a pawn instead of losing a pawn. Actually, I'm losing a pawn anyway. Never mind. Uh, who cares? It's just a pawn. I care, but and what am I going to say? So I lost my c5 pawn. Can't castle. Got to get the bishop moving. Well, it's a scary position for sure. Um, part because they pushed g5 much earlier. I 
think it's important that I hold the D file. I don't know so much about the C file. Okay. This is dangerous. I very much like White's position. And this, by the way, is what I keep saying when I say I don't know openings, is that I get these absolutely atrocious, undefendable positions. Um, pretty much every time I play an opening. Unless it's one of the very few, few openings that I do know. Sort of crap that I get. Yeah, okay, so... I'm not going to defend that position until um, the world runs out of time. I'm going to resign it and move on. And he was rated like 300 points below me. And he can get those kind of positions against okay. me because... Uh, when I'm blitzing moves, I don't know what I'm doing. Check. This, on the other hand, I have played in tournaments before. I've even lost this opening. This particular variation of this opening where Black gives back the piece right away. Completely dubious. Um, and the game I lost, I didn't trade Queens, and Queen eventually checkmated me. And ever since, um, once I've taken the piece back, and once I've, uh, one second, yeah, once I've um, gotten into a stable position, then I just trade back the queens, and I'm up a pawn. This blocks his bishop. I know he's going to say that he doesn't like this bishop, and he wants to trade it off. And it looks like I'm going to try to trade my knight for his bishop, but I'm just going to sit on that once my knight flops down there again. Um, <sighs> so he thinks g2 is the target, does he? Oh, well, where's the target now? Not g2. Check. Check. This bishop I do want. The other one I don't really care so much about. Um, yeah, okay, since I can hold this square, now both of his rooks are blockaded by my pawn.
Honestly, this rook f1 wasn't about formulating a real threat. It was more about getting his king away from my pawn, so I can promote it. That was my big idea. I don't think there was any real threat with rook f1. Check. What's he going to do? Got a mate and one threat on the table. King d8 is the only move that stops it. Three. Ready. Going berserk. Check. Bishop C5, work F1. Book. What kind of crap I have to know? If I'm going to play E4. Rather, this is the fantastic substance that I studied um, back in high school. I haven't really improved much upon it since then, or I haven't expanded my knowledge beyond these openings. Because I found it way more fun to learn about all the tactical lines. I figured that all the positional stuff would work itself out. That hasn't happened. Congrats on your win there. Well, if he's not looking, I'm going to play King F2, King G1. I'm going to wager just about anything that... Well, there's nothing you can really do to stop it either, is there? But yeah, King F2, G1... And, Check. okay, I guess that kind of stops it. Makes some, something that's kind of threatening. Queen G5, okay. If Queen G5, then I have 
active places to put my people. I think I have places here as well. Getting the knight out of the corner is not simple. Oh, crap. Um, I guess I'm moving into the corner and giving up the bishop, which was my only advantage. But at least I got my time back on the clock. So I guess that means berserking is worth about a bishop. Um, at least for me it is. Um, don't want his rook on a2. I can't play knight d2. I have to play it to a3. If rook c3, I get to exchange on f6 and double his pawns and get an endgame I might be able to play. Um, I'm looking at, well, I can't do knight c7, knight e7. Seven's guarded. Um, now I can. I'm going to try for it. Okay, I need to ensure my back rank doesn't get overly exposed. I mean, that's the whole idea of the two knights defense, is that white gets cramped. Black gives up a pawn, white gets cramped, white takes forever to unwind. When he does unwind, he's still got the extra pawn. There's like absolutely no way to avoid that. If rook d1, I take the knight. Okay, we're gonna continue with our plan of throwing everything into the attack. One might ask what attack. One would be correct to ask, because I really don't have one. Um, Check. Victory. Ready. Going berserk. Was my knight trapped? I don't know. I wasn't too concerned about that possibility. Um... I mean, even if it were trapped, my opponent would have to figure out how to trap it. Okay, is this not a free pawn? Looks like a free pawn, but I don't know this opening. I'm just going to assume that it's not.
<laughs> hey, three. What's that for? What was the point of A3? Never seen that in this kind of setup. Oops. Okay, so my position's getting very loose. Um, I think I'm okay, but definitely on uncharted waters. Queen A1, Knight B. Queen A1's not happening. I guess I do Knight B3 anyway. Right, because that's force. I can reclaim d6. Maybe I can sack on g3. No, there's too many defenders for there to be a mate. Um, Still too many defenders. So tempted to take the knight, and yet I have no reason to. Well, it's just a scary piece, and I don't like scary pieces. Taking it. I'm up a minor piece, I just want to liquidate everything. Check. Everything's going according to plan. Oops. Oh. That's the new plan. I'd normally put my knight back on f6, except it's practically hanging on it. Okay, do I not just attack the rook? No. No, since I'm getting fancy here. And now I see that my time is low. Check. I could have seen that earlier. Check. Check.
victory. Thank goodness. He should not have resigned Ready. there. Going berserk. Wow. So, um, where am I in the tournament standings? I've forgotten. Certainly nowhere near 408 points. I'm working my way up. Okay, so now I just throw this. And GG. Maybe the F1. Pray for positional maneuvering. Um, Such a tactical position. Yeah. E4 is doubly under attack. But that's not such a big problem. Because E4 is doubly defended. We have to look at this later. Uh, Check. Check. Victory. I'll take it. Back to tournament. Back to tournament. Leech us, I would like to play another round. Can you get me an opponent? Oh. All right. So yeah, we've got 40 points.
just for laughs, let's see who's at the top. Or not. Never mind. Ready. Going berserk. Going berserk, going berserk, going berserk, going berserk. Victory. Ready. Huh, okay, so I'm not going to win every game by default like that one. That's not good. There's quite a bit of lag. And Lee just thinks that much of that is originating on my end. Uh, Hey, Vison. Apparently, I'm going to time out on some of these games. Um, well, okay, never mind. I'd say the lag suddenly got absolutely atrocious. So, I predicted that I'm going to lose on time. But, um, turns out that uh, somehow we've gotten reasonable ping time, uh, so I'm not seeing seconds every time I move. Yeah, this is what I'm calling the well-rested Lee Chess Summer Marathon, where you play a game, rest for 12 hours, and then start playing again. And I've got my way up to 40 points, uh, leaders 400, uh, I've been playing for about an hour, and I couldn't tell you, um, okay, well, we're not going to deal with that. We're going to end that on a light square. Okay, I can't push, so I have to do this. Work some miracles here, because I'm down upon, and I'd like to win this one. First, we have to blockade the pawn. Um, now, due to the bishop threat, or the attack on the bishop. I want to keep my pawns together, um, in particular these two. Check. They defend each other quite well. Now we got a fork. Um, now d5 Check. is possible. Okay, I should have taken rook c5 more seriously. I don't want to give up the base of my pawn chain. Nope. Maybe. <laughs> We're going to see if he lets me get away with this one. No, uh, he's not letting me get away with that. Yeah, some less attentive opponents might let me just take the B-pawn um, and not be at all concerned about that. How do I generate threats here without giving my G-pawn? No, oh, I have to give the G-pawn. Here we go, all in. Check. I'm betting on my peace activity. Check. I have to attack the rook 
Impossible protect protect my pawns. But that doesn't look reasonable. Yeah, I don't know for sure, like if that was worth it. Um, I could have spent all my time trying to figure it out, but pragmatically, I went for this kind of end game, and here I am definitely down upon um, actually Check. taking the double pawn wasn't such a good idea. Check. I'm down two, but this is a theoretical draw. Now whether I can execute the theoretical draw is another matter entirely, but at least I have some peace of mind in knowing that, with best play, I could draw this. Check. 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 Mm. We're going to try this. I don't believe in it. Check. 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 Step draw. Step draw. I offer a draw. Give me a draw. It's a draw. Thank you. Uh, get me back to the tournament. Yeah, Lee Chess is kind of choking at the moment. Oh, so I'm down 135 points today. Did I mention that? Ready. Oh, wow. So... In that time where I couldn't get a pairing, I lost five games. I don't even know how, because I didn't see five games getting played. But, um, yeah, apparently I lost 135 points this tournament. It's all about that recovery. You're not going to have the skill to learn the openings. And you have to at least be able to recover from anything you fall into. And honestly, it's more entertaining for people to watch me recover. Um, than it is for them to watch actual good play. Five is soft. Um, I can't get any peace there. Oh wait, I've got knight b4. So, one thing at a time. Check.
Okay. This has gone from sharp to absolutely nutty. Um, Check. That's not a fork. Check. But this is a double attack. Oh, but my knight hangs. Guys, this is madness. All right, well, he gets my knight. He can have it. He earned it. Check. I don't play with takebacks in rated games. I've Victory. lost too many games on time. So, my general policy to never take back in a rated game. Now, I might make exceptions if I'm not, like, being very competitive at the moment, but this is a tournament we're talking about. This ain't not. There are rules. To quote the big Lebowski. Uh, music. Well, I don't know if tournaments allow it, but my personal settings say that if I'm playing rated, takebacks are not happening. I don't want to have to argue over when I'm going to allow takebacks and when I'm not going to allow them. I just don't. Not worth it. I don't get paid enough for that. That is, I just don't get paid. So, yeah. Uh, this wins the rook. Good trick to know is that if they push both c3 and b4, Check. in some cases you can just take b4, um, because there's no defense to this bishop d4 hitting the rook. I'm actually going to go after the king now, or at least threaten to. Um, I almost dropped my rook. I think I should just take the rook and be happy. I can castle the other way, right? I haven't moved my king yet. Knight takes pawn, and the knight's trapped. Um, knight's still trapped. Okay, yeah, he's entering a world of pain. Good quote. Market zero. <laughs> I could have just moved my king to d7 and my rook to e8. Jack. Why did I feel need to get fancy? I want to fork the king and the bishop, which is why I'm allowing all these stupid tactics. Because I'm not looking at the things in front of me, I'm looking at these... Yeah, here we are. Check. Got it. Looking at things that aren't there, as opposed to things that are. So now I just double my rooks on the 7th and just checkmate him, you know. Check. Unless there's another mate. I think doubling somewhere is going to result in a mate.
has not given up. He's got some attitude. I'll give him that. Check. 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 Okay, threats knight g3, rook h1. Check. Come on. Let's get these moves over to the Check. server so I can win. Check. There we go. Ready. Going berserk. Hmm. I'm starting to think I should learn this opening. Okay, so I just won a pawn. Um, no strings attached. Check. He thinks I'm going to castle. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if I should surprise him or not. I'm thinking I should, just because it's more fun to surprise. Did I castle yet? Should I castle? Check. The only reason I went for this check instead of trading is because this wins the knight. Um. Otherwise, I might have done some more um, aggressive maneuver. But winning the knight's good enough for me. So now we're up three pawns. Again, no strings attached. Well, I guess there is one string, and that's that my king's in the center. But I'm not too afraid of that. Check. King A1's the only move. Check.
See, I moved. See, it takes six seconds for Lee Chess to acknowledge that I moved. I think I need to stop berserking, or going berserk, because um, if I don't, I'm just going to lose on time. Um, Victory. So yeah, that's the end of the going berserk part, and now we just have to play normally. My ping. Yeah, my ping's low. Um... Ready. Going berserk. Okay. What's going on here? Oh, my queen. Okay, my queen's going on. Um, sure. Yeah, why not? Oh. Uh, definitely came out on the worse end of that. Let's just concede this and go back to playing the tournament. You lose. Because even if I can win that, it's not going to be worth it. I probably can't win it. That's why. That's why I wanted to resign it. Yeah. So, as soon as it became clear that only two results were possible, and apparently I lost my previous game, and I don't remember that, but um, getting a different pairing means I can score more than if I try to win that. Did I lose the previous game? I don't remember that. I really don't. Victory. Where do I stand here? Okay, so now it says that instead of loot, it says I won two in a row. That doesn't make any sense. Ready. Maybe today's just double points day. 
Who knows? Um, I could have done bishop b3, but that would have required tying my down passively. I'm still forced to do it here, so what am I talking about? Bishop e7 step? No, it's not. Check. Okay, so we take check, activate our passive bishop, and we're up a pawn. Now we try active squares, try to exchange down, and next will come just a4, a5, a6, and so forth. Boop, 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 boop. I don't think servers are crashing, I just think they're slow. I don't think we're going to see a total meltdown. I think this is just going to become a war by attri a war of attrition, where um, players are just going to slog their way through it, and those who score points score points. Uh, slowing servers don't always lead to crashing servers. That's a misconception. I think even last time, the server wasn't crashing, it was just slowing down. Um, uh, now, granted, the rate of slowdown just kept accelerating, um, but I don't think that's going to happen here. I think enough player, well, I think the rate of slowdown, the rate at which things are collapsing, enough that some players are going to quit the marathon mid-marathon. Check. And it's their quitting that's going to keep the marathon going. Ready. So I've equalized. Also, why am I not playing the Slav? The Slav would be way more fun to play than what I'm doing. Why am I not doing that? To play the Slav and listen to March Slav. Why not, right? Well, one, because I can't play March Slav, and two, I don't have a non-copyrighted recording of it. Um, you just imagine that March Slav is played. Um, okay, let's exchange to get this bishop. Not at all how a slob would go. That's okay, because I'm not playing a slob.
Uh, so let's take the C file. You might double rooks on the A file, in which case I'll need to blockade B5. Um, I'm betting he won't, though. I'm betting he'll just let me pile up with bishop f8, getting this. Okay, so I do have to barricade on b5. Not a big deal. Oh, I thought I was going to fork his pieces somehow. What, a, what was I smoking? Um, okay, well, this has just gone from bad to worse. At least I get some peace activity for my idiocy. And that's a free rook. Well, I guess, no, he can't even trade bishop for knight and f4, because I take the rook if he does bishop takes the Quite resigned, black is victorious. The clock is still ticking. But okay, let's go back to the tournament. And I got zero points for that victory. That makes sense, right? Maybe it just takes a long, long time to post the result. No, nope, I can't play b5 because then he's got tactics. Here, tactics are gone. Here I'm in the clear. Up the pawn. And giving it back because I'm a dum dum. Um, unless, well, yeah. My opponent knows this better than I do. No question there. So either knight c3, or he moves the bishop somewhere, or I don't know. Take the bishop. Ultimately, I'm planning on some kind of mating attack, starting with c5. Again, this is the rawest uh, sketch of a draft of a plan here. Things may change. Okay, do I have any fun checks? I don't think I do. Check. Might be fun. Well, there's no, no pins and stuff along. Check. Oh, here's the discovery. Now I see it. So that's how those fit together. Check. This wins a queen. Um, Oh, it's fun how that turned around, isn't it? Um, I don't know if there's anything here to... Hey, look, 
I found something. Yeah. Maybe I could go in for round two with another Knight F3 check. That would be fun. But that F3 square is so far away. Duck back here. Rook a7, I just take the knight. I called it. Not too hard to see. So next is bishop d4, rook e2, rook takes f2. Which my opponent really can't really... There's nothing you can do to stop it. Especially if he times out. It is his move, right? Ooh, how many times can I claim victory? Victory. Okay. Ready. Just one, apparently. Uh, end games. Who doesn't love end games? Okay, I see everybody's hand going up. Who does love end games? Um. Rooks belong in open files. Unfortunately, I might get it forked here, but, um... The generalization of the statement, that pieces belong in active squares. I protect my queen. He doubles. I think my other rook. I'm not sure if it belongs in e1 or d1. Okay, we're gonna bet the house on queen a4. Hitting this. Uh, that's interesting. Could play f4. 
think I have to. I'd rather that this position weren't so complicated, but um, I'd also rather that I'd be winning. I don't get to choose everything. I could take on a7. I don't think doing so gets me anywhere. I'm just going to keep piling on the d5 pawn. Okay. This is necessary now, because um, I have no other way forward. My king has to approach the center next. Um, he's going to split my pawns. I think I can still hold the end game. Because I do control c4. He's got a light squared bishop, and all his pawns are in light squares. Uh, okay, this I think just got a lot easier. Now my king in the center is immune, so I can move my rook to more active places. Check. We do pawn takes or rook takes. Um, I, think, mm, I think I have to do rook takes. It's too many counter chances if I do pawn takes. Oh, I also need to solidify my control of this square. I have to play g3. Not optional. You can play that game. You push on the king side, I push on the queen side, and let's see what happens. Okay, c5 or e5? e5 is actually stronger here. Because it's going to induce a zig swap. I'm going to play d4 and then bishop c4. I'm going to win my bishop, but I'm going to have too many advanced pawns for him to, his bishop to stop them all. Or he plays d4 and I just play king takes. Um, that I didn't see. That's actually a problem.
It does give me an idea. Now we zigzag this way. Oh, right. Um. Advanced zigzag techniques, maybe. <laughs> There's your triangulation. Black to move again. What was wrong is that he gets to promote. We don't want to let Black promote just so I can take a pawn. Check. Uh, that was stupid. I should have found a way to protect my pawn. Okay, now I need to do bishop f3 and c5. Check. Apparently in either order, because... Oh, hey, Check. hang on. You got this. Victory. Actually, king d5 was better. But whatever. That's a detail. Um, Ready. Yeah, apparently T-Bolt um, fixed the database index, which was causing poor performance. There are ways to remedy some things on the fly without releasing new software. Um, good he didn't play Knight Takes Pawn, because he he wouldn't want a pawn. Um, I'm predicting Bishop E7. That's possible, too. All right, let's set up for the subtle cheapo. He's going to play knight c5. Actually, my threat to take an f6 doesn't really hold any water. Um, so let's just play c5 instead. <laughs> Queen f6 isn't quite legal here. I 
Actually, I could take this bishop, couldn't I? Let's take it. And expose a threat here. Um, get the knight in the way. And then bring our rook up and over. Covers the c3 square, so there's no shenanigans over here. Check. Could have just taken h6. That I have to do things the hard way. Check. Not check. Totally not threatening anything. Other than checkmate. And I passed a mate in two here. What am I smoking? Check. There we go. Check three. I know how to check mate in two. Oh, I missed a mate in one there somewhere too. Ready. That's a good number. One seven oh five blah blah blah. It reminds me of that show the IT crowd and their um their joke about emergency services. How you could get your own personalized emergency services if you just call their new service number. I think they even had a little jingle that had their service number in it. I guess if you haven't seen the show, you wouldn't have any clue what I'm talking about. But it was hilarious. Check. And this is how we win Tempi. A tempo by itself isn't going to change the world, but multiple tempi um, help us get a decent position. And have fun on your expedition, Elsie. <laughs> go King Go. Go King Go. Get somewhere safe before this all blows up. Uh, okay. Yeah, sight speed has definitely improved recently. Um, go King Go. Find somewhere safe. Hey, it's Milwaukee Matt. How are you doing? Okay, so. Pawn's not going anywhere. if we can generate some threat against something. Um, how to deal with this? Yeah, we want to continue covering this square. That one's going to become very important soon. 
And I don't want to open the H file, because that would just help my opponent play Rook H7. I want to open things on the queen side. Now that he's put everything behind this F pawn, maybe I do take the H file. G6, I play queen f6, and I think I have pretty solid grasp of this position. Um, so yeah, let's exchange. What's the worst that could happen? Check. Check. All right, let me not be entirely careless here. Um, actually, I promote with check. A very important distinction. Check. So, his playing check. f6 and g7 with tempo isn't going to make a difference here, because my promotion comes with tempo, with check. Oh, you're at SGDQ. Nice. I missed the Tazbot block. I really wanted to see it. Ready. I'm going to have to see it in the archives. Although I assume that pretty much what they're gearing for is AGDQ. Um, it's much greater coverage. Yeah, I liked, um, what race did they have yesterday? They had a couple. Oh, Tazbot's today. Check. Well, I'm going to have to check that out. Tazbot's always a lot of fun, figuring out all the various ways in which games are broken. All right, I can play F6. Gary. F6, Queen H5, G6, Queen H6, Pawn takes something. Uh, I could also just castle here, Queen H5, and get mated. Take out the middleman and just... I think I'm doing good here. All right. That was a triple fork. Problem is that one of the pieces that knight was attacking was a knight. Um. I mean, bishop g4 is dumb because he could do, take on e7 and then take my... Oh, wait, no, he couldn't. Never mind. Didn't hear me say any of that. La la la. Just keep going on with your day. Um. Okay, so if this pawn moves, then I have queen c5 check. Regardless, I can still develop my rook. Now on a rook, 
and he doesn't know where the resign button is. I mean, he's not compelled to resign. Um, I just think he would score more points if he resigned here than if he kept playing on. Because if you resign quickly in these arena events, it means you get another opponent and you're able to play a new game. And um, So unless you're on a big winning streak, generally, well, no. Unless you're on a winning streak, um, resigning doesn't hurt you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was watching that. I was... I really like the uh, Yoshi team, or they had Trihex up there, and um, there's they called that the Mario Couch. Yeah, Mario Lost Levels is cool. You got to give a lot of respect to him because, I mean, playing that game is challenging enough, and the fact that it'll throw random things at you toward the end of the game. Makes it that much more difficult to play. And I just pinned my knight. Okay, I can play f5 and knight f6 and get out of the pit, but didn't have to do that. Oh, that's too bad. So it's cool to hang out with people up there. Um, here, let's do something silly. No, it's not. Okay, so I haven't decided which file I'm going to double on. Check. But just imagine all those people watching the show, um, watching SGDQ Live, got to see you moving this way and that way, weaving around the crowd. Yeah, that, they had too many people on that couch, but whatever. I remember with AGDQ, they have these big projectors up. Um, but I think those are to the side of the main stage. And you'd prefer to see things on the actual TV. have taken the pawn. Alright, we're going to go back and take that pawn. Or not. I'm going to win this on time. That's the dignified way to win. By dignified, I mean anything but dignified. Check. Could have done a rook lift, too. Maybe I should do that next. Okay, it's going to take, and now I fork. Victory. Hey, look, you found the resign button after all. But only after taking my rook. Ready.
I don't think I'd take that. Well, it's tricky. I think my life is much simpler if I let the pawns remain where they are. I just take, no? Check. Check. All right, have fun in SGDQ. Check. 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 Victory. Ready. I gotta say, this is a lot easier than the experimental marathon I played in. Because all of my opponents are rated lower than I am. Minus a few opponents, but... In general, really easy to get easy pairings here.
check. When I say I know jack about openings, because this kind of nonsense routinely occurs in my games. Where I get an objectively inferior position. And then find tactics and somehow manage to win the end game. Okay, the stops future rook f2. And also tries to mount some kind of attack on f4. Okay, now I need to blockade on E4. Check. I just need to set out the attack and hope that um, it doesn't kill me. Threats Queen G4. I 
I suppose my threat's to play g4 and f3. Just seal this up. And that threat seems to be... Oh! Wait, no. Everything's just barely covered here. It appears to be difficult to stop my idea. Okay, but I was just going to take on h5. This is playing with fire, but I think I'm okay. Oh, I could play bishop g5. That's kind of cute. I think I have to play it too. I need that tempo to stop rook f2. So now I'm up a rook. Give some of that back. Check. 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 Yep, I know how to checkmate with two queens. I'm one of the lucky select few who know how to do that. Ready. See, now pairings are getting harder. Maybe I should take another break and come back who knows when. Check. Check. Oh, hey, look. I trapped my bishop. Trapped's the wrong word, but pretty much activated um, all of my opponent's pieces trying to untrap my bishop.
I guess I was unsuccessful because my bishop is getting loose. But this only works because e3 hangs. Momentarily, I'm down a knight. I trade rooks and trade the exchange. That's not what I was looking for. Um, rook h2. This might be what I'm looking for here. So I got my knight back. And I've got a double attack here. I was nervous about going into this because this is only a double attack, um, but I think it's enough. Check. Victory. Well, that was fun. <laughs> People are blundering a lot. <laughs> I'm not surprised. So... Yeah, this has been fun. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think Ready. that my stream is hosted, nor do I think that I'm going to win too many more of these right now. Um, why did I play that? I needed to play knight a6. Because here... Oh, okay, bishop takes a6 wasn't forced. Um, still, my move ordering was terrible. So I'm not winning this, am I? I'm down one pawn. I have to protect this. That kind of forces my hand in allowing queen d5. Check. Um. Check. Oh. Okay, that's pretty bad.
I guess on the bright Daddy. side, Lee Chess isn't rewarding me with pairings too quickly. Like, just because I know how to hang my queen and everything doesn't mean I'm getting faster pairings. I think if I berserk, that actually does affect how I get paired. Or what color I get, or something. I've noticed, in a recent tournament, I was in first, and one of the other players berserked, and the, or went berserk. And, um... They got another pairing and were able to win the tournament while I still was kind of waiting to get a pairing. I, again, that just could be luck. Um, yeah, I think that's what happened in the Slav tournament. I was doing pretty well. Part of that might also be driven by rating. So. Maybe if I had a higher rating, maybe I'd get more pairings. I don't know. Okay, so I want to trade this knight off. I really want to trade off this knight. But I'll accept this instead. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Oh crap, I forgot the pawn. Um, back to square one. I was so proud of myself for closing the king's side, and I forgot that pawn on d3 um, was hanging. So, that means that I need to go about my business and find a way to activate my pieces without hanging more stuff. So H5's coming, I can't stop that. The point of this is to stop knight e2. Stops knight d3. All that's covered. Unwinding in these positions takes a little bit of time. Now I need to go about this way. And once the knight's out of the way, I can play rook h1. Or maybe I could play rook h1 right now. It doesn't do anything right now. On the other hand, knight moves actually do do something. That gets forked. Okay. I have to take the knight. Otherwise, I can't defend this. Check. So not only am I threatening to double on the H file, if the D pawn moves, I'm threatening to take the E pawn.
Okay, so rooks are not doubled anymore, so it's safe for me to I think so. I think this is safer for me than it is for my opponent. I was mistaken. I have to go back. Actually, wait. I could take here. He takes. I take d6, and he takes there. It's still checkmate. Um, forced. Check. So, uh, I don't have to take the rook. Check. Very well played on my opponent's Check. part. Very observant. Check. Now my Check. rook. Oh. Yeah. My pieces are far more inactive than my opponent's. Rook's got to activate itself. That's one way. Check. Check. I'm in trouble. Check. 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 I got very lucky. It was a good end game. I got very lucky. Check. Yeah, I've repeated many times that knowing your endgame fundamentals will help you solve more complex endgames. So here, knowing that everything other than that pawn race was lost, I had to go for the pawn race. And I knew that I had to go for the pawn race. It just happened that the pawn race was good enough. Check. Check. GG, buddy. Check. Victory. Still, I think at the nine hour mark I might take a break and then come back later because these pairings are getting extra super difficult. And I'd prefer not to slug through this for another nine hours. As fun as that would be for some of you to watch, I'm not that much of a masochist. As compared to some other streamers who will, say, play Stockfish level 8 many, many times in a row, or I'm sorry, AI level 8 um, many times in a row. And then uh, eventually win one. Um, I'm not that kind of masochist. Okay, so what's going on here?
Why did I play that? Actually, I might get some compensation for it, but um, I still don't understand why I just played it like that. I have to take on d4. I have to move my knight. I just will move it here. Knight takes knight. Well, I don't know. I didn't calculate it. He didn't calculate it. Um, actually, maybe he did. Let's get out of that. I don't want to trade. I want to keep my bishop. I have nowhere useful to put it. So we exchange. Um, pretty bad end game. There's no retaining that pawn, so let's uh, just trade it off. Uh, that's ugly. Can't play f4. f3, bishop takes f3. e3, there's no queen e4, but... I'm in trouble. Ah, there is a queen h5. So, yeah. Got to play rook e4. Oh, but this loses not just an exchange, but an entire piece. Yeah. You lose. So, uh, a couple more games and then I'll wrap this up. And then we'll come back later. Because honestly, my stream is not featured on the Lee Chess site. Um, everybody's watching Chess Network or somebody like that. So, my playing on here is for my own amusement. I had a lot of fun getting into the top 100 here. Ready. Play the Alikin. The Eliokin. The Alakai. Can we get tripled C pawns? Okay, well, I can't maintain the tension indefinitely. I was forced to do something there. Um, now I can blockade on d5. Although c4 is coming, so what do I do? Um, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And hope that something... Um, tactically favorable appears.
games are getting interesting. Um, maybe I pursue a different objective here, and that's to actually learn something from playing chess. Nah, it's more fun just to win. Be real. So, after three hours of winning, I think it's time for a break. Um, so, yeah, let's exchange bishops. Once bishops are exchanged, I can chop d5 after he takes f4. is rookie one here though. Which I have to play king f8 maybe? I don't know. Um Oh, this is going to suck. Got active pieces. The advantage of playing this opening is that you get pieces that are active. Now, they might not be in the right squares, but at least they're active. So at least I can make things that resemble threads. Um, Okay, queen is placed such that his knight is unable to move here. So blockading on c5 forces white to rethink where he's located. Um, I prefer to not exchange knights. Maybe at some point I break with b5. My opponent gets too reckless. Careless or something less. That deals with back rank made threats. Yeah. So I can play b5 here. Obviously, he's planning knight e5, and he just forgot that I had this. Um, but I'm not sure what he could have done, even if he did see it. I'm not sure what I do now that I've played b5.
I think knight e5 is a good way to continue here. Allowing that check was dumb. It's gonna set me back. Uh, oh shit, that's also check. Check. Yeah, why don't I just hang everything with check? After such a tenacious defense, too. Check. 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 Oh, and that's mate. Check. And he didn't see it. Check. 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 Arrgh. Check. 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 You lose. <sighs> well, that was sad. I could have defended that, although I was a little bit low on energy since I played an opening I didn't know. Got an end middle game I didn't know. Got an early end game I didn't know. And then was very low on time trying to defend an objectively lost end game. That was too bad. Ready. I was having good fun until I started losing. Hey look! I just gave away a piece. I'm the best. You lose. Ready. Hey, we got an opponent. We can beat this guy, maybe. <laughs> okay, can I remember to play the slop this time? Not if he plays the London. No slop against the London. Not worth it. I'm able to attack squares and stuff. So yeah, once he takes my knight on c6, um, I'm gonna my bishop covers b4, so I could just play b4 anyway. Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, you have to have some fun with these tournaments, right? So... Probably going for Scholar's Mate against a 2150 was not a good idea. Um, but hey, look. Because I played that, I got this pairing. I got paired against the 1763. And, you know, I bet I'm going to get a tournament point or two from this. <laughs> so, yeah, possibly throwing the game accidentally like that might have been the way to play. It could be that going for Scholar's Mate against every opponent is just the way to play, because sometimes you'll get a quick point, sometimes you'll um, get a better pairing. Well, some of these opponents are pretty exhausted anyway, so they're not expecting you to go for Scholar's Mate. I have a choice. Do I do rook a3 or bishop b4? Or do I take on e4? No, that's bad. Um, I'm going to take on d5. I need to be prepared to play something against that. I think bishop b4 is the way to go. So he takes, I play bishop c3, or he doesn't take, and I play bishop c3 anyway. Now I'm attacking both d4, attacking the rook, attacking the knight. Um, looks good. Victory. Ready. I thought there was something wrong with this way of playing the opening. Um, I'm not seeing it though. Yeah, I'm confused. Maybe it's just that I get a lot of activity. I myself have tried playing this and it never works for me. So while his queen's trying to attack something over there, I'm gonna go mop up a pawn or two. Or make a thread or two, or come up with something. One free pawn. How many free pawns do I get today? Predicting that I get this as well, because I don't see any way to defend it. Two free pawns. Threatening a rook, threatening a knight. Do I get the knight? Or am I dead if I take the knight?
I can't tell. And that bothers me. I think I have to play G3. Still two free pawns, especially two connected past pawns. That's not bad. Oh, hey, a queen trade. That was most unexpected. I saw the possibility, but I thought surely my opponent wouldn't do that. Because this endgame is... I mean, it should be trivially winning. All I have to do is rush the A-pawn. Possibly the B-pawn with it, but... Um, how is he going to stop the A-pawn? He does knight d5, I trade knights. He does knight d7, I do knight b5, and both my pawns run. He does nothing, I just push a5. He does nothing again, I don't know what I do. Okay, so we've traded into just a pawn up end game, which should still be winning, but it's not <clears throat> anywhere near as easy or obvious as what we previously had. So I flubbed that, and this is my mulligan shot. Try to recover and get something good out of that. <clears throat> Yeah, king e7's a mistake, because, oh shoot, I could have played c5. I think c5 would have won on the spot. Check. The deal here is that I have to activate my king might involve leaving a pawn behind. Check. Oh, my rook belongs in a corner, or at least it belongs on an edge of the board. Um, I have terribly, terribly misplayed this. The reason that this is terrible is that his pawn runs faster than mine does. I have to think about, do I push h4... No, I've got to stop his pawn. Sucks. Um. So I have twice flubbed this endgame. That was a mouse slip on his part. He intended rook h7. I feel for him. Definitely do. Yeah, when that clock reaches 8.30, I'm going to take a break. The only reason I played it out for another half hour there... Ready. Um, 
because uh, an audience showed up and started making comments and things. But I suspect at this point people are watching Chess Network or watching whoever else is playing. I'm sorry, King's Crusher is playing. And then the Soldier 89 dude and... Network's not playing. He doesn't play these things. Check. All right, so we got a less than exciting end game ahead of us. Um, White's got an extra pawn on the queen side. Black has central activity. That's about all there is to this. Although, here I have B5. Check. And there's no longer a threat on E5, so I'm able to tie down... Oh, right. Forgot about that. There's no tying down today. Still down a pawn, but I might be able to take the A pawn and draw this. Okay, so I have to blockade that pawn. Or trade queens. Got to blockade the pawn. I'm curious if my opponent can actually win this um, without me making some stupid blunder.
He's trying to win my A pawn or my rook or some combination of my pieces. Um, So, I hope that a queen exchange doesn't kill me here. I think with my rook on a7, I've got everything covered. Check. Check. Yeah. Well, I mean, there wasn't much I can do. Because if I didn't go into this end game, um, he was just going to take my A pawn and promote. So being aware that the sack might happen didn't stop it from happening. Check. 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 Victory. There we go. That's how you win on time.
Ready. Let Flourish kick our butt. And then we'll withdraw for some rest. And come back later when there's more easy pairings to be had. Although he's playing a fun, interesting variation here. Um, oh crap, it's queen f6. Uh, so we have to play knight h6 and improvise this. Okay, well, we'll make do, somehow. I should have played queen f6 instead of queen e7, though. It's going to continue to hurt for the rest of the game. I'm targeting d4. I'm trying to provoke d5, which is just not going to happen. But also threatening knight a5 and knight takes c. Once that bishop's gone, I'll have a little bit more activity. Okay, so I get to play bishop d7 with tempo. Or I could take the bishop. I'm going to need a knight to defend my king. I see he can play bishop b5 here. My idea is that I want to trade bishops and then get my knight over to the king's side so I don't get mated. Um... My knight's better at covering dark squares than my bishop is. What do I do here? I guess we back off on the knight takes bishop threat, because I didn't really want that bishop. Not the MVP. Okay, so I'm up two pawns. My everything is hanging. Um, so yeah, I'm playing against a twenty one sixty. Um, only up buckets of material. Um, trying to threaten queen g3 check. So to cut off queen g3 check, I'm playing my queen to g6. Also, rook e3, rook g3 doesn't work on account of bishop takes rook. I was planning c5 here, and now I see this is a little more dangerous than I anticipated. Um, gotta play c5, though. Okay, there's knight takes c5, bishop takes, takes d7. I couldn't stop it. There's also rook d3. But regardless, I play rook e8. Rook e8, rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes, queen. 
Not so hot. You take F2, though. Check. That's a fun tactic. The point is that D7 hangs. I could do this. Check. Check. Well, now I just have to keep some tactical alertness about me. Um, Check. I can't do that. And yet, I'm kind of compelled to, aren't I? Wow! What a perpetual. I can't block with F6 because I get mated. I'm forced to go back and forth. Except he has rook F3, I've got queen D1. Um, Check. Oh. Check. I don't see any way out of this. F6, Rook takes F6, um, Queen D4, yeah, I have no shots. It's a draw. Take the draw. That was well played. Ready. And we're going to play E5. No messing around with trying to find something better. Knights in the center are, are generally super well placed. Um, so sure, I've got an isolated E pawn, but I'm not afraid. I can't play H4. The whole point of this bishop E7. Or is this one of those fishing pole lines? Give it a try. I really want to play h4. The fact that tactically it doesn't work doesn't stop me. I'm going to play it. Oh, I'm committed, so let's keep moving. F5, knight takes bishop's mate. Would like to see that. Uh, what's a good move here? Sure, we'll protect our pawn. have to protect the knight a second time. Otherwise, I would be generating mate threats. I kind of wish I had time to double up on h7. So far, I've not seen the means to accomplish that. Um, Uh, 
Fine, I'll take your bishop. That's what you want me to do, I'll do it. Threatening mate. Threatening the bishop. Gonna grab the bishop pair, and we'll play out an endgame, because that's what black wants to do. One, two, three, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. We get more. I would like to attack that as many times as possible. Although he's only got two defending it, so why don't I just take it? Sure, let's take and hope that knight takes e5 isn't a problem. Actually, it's not. Never mind. So this is a fork. Also, e5 is defended. Check. Check. Victory. There we go. That was a fun pairing. So I've won five in a row. Which explains why I have not yet resigned. Although, I'm trying to remember, didn't I just lose the previous game? No, I got lucky. Yeah, I've gotten lucky many games in a row here. So, that's cool. Ready. Oh, I get this guy again. Um, I'm going to play the O'Kelly again. No, he's not. Doesn't matter. I'm going to play this anyway. So, tactics. Tactics are interesting, especially when you're not on the receiving end. Uh, here I'm on the receiving end. Suddenly gotten much less interesting. So, yeah, Queen E2 is an attempt to hold this together. Uh, okay. Not sure why he let me get away with that. So, toward the king we go.
Sure, let's activate the knight and see what happens. Cause I'm not seeing anything else that's positive around here. Thought against that, I had queen g5. Now see that queen g5 walks into a tactic. Um, but maybe that's what I have to do here. So I'm giving an exchange, I'm getting some fun attacking stuff, maybe. Um, okay, that's kind of bad. So basically my whole army's hanging. I'm gonna sack my queen and possibly a piece or two. I'm down one piece. My queen's still hanging, my bishop's still hanging. Down a piece, down a piece. Um, still down a piece. Who needs pieces anyway, right? No, but I still am generating tactical threats, so still some cause to keep going here. I was planning bishop e4. That doesn't quite work, does it? I could take d5 and then pin the knight. That's the plan. Suddenly become the plan here. Okay, so we're down a piece for a pawn, but it looks like I'm getting the piece back. That was quite the melee. Oh, well struck, sir. Check. So, yeah, he keeps the material. Check.
Gotta push my pawn to create any stalemate chance. Um. Check. 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 News. Oh, that works. That definitely works. Um, and with that said, it is definitely break time. Break time is overdue. Been playing for a bit over three hours. It is break time. So, with that said, check out the standings. We stand in 85th place. No doubt, over the course of the coming eight hours, we will not remain in 85th place the entire time. Um, but it is not my intent to play this for another eight hours. So we're going to see if I can, um, sometime from now, come back and see how well I can do. Um, also, this this um, this proves my misconception that it's possible to inflate your rating by playing um, bladed. Although you do get many easier opponents, you don't win as many points for each game. So it's not possible to get the Leech's Master title just by playing against weaker opposition. Or it's not practical at any rate. So, should we check out how the tournament leader is doing? Who is our tournament leader? Our tournament leader is this dude. Let's see how he's doing. 